brought him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So God drove man out of the garden and put an angel at the entrance of the garden that is judgment. If you are still one casa, you are giving you no idea of sin in so I don't attend you. I don't attend you. What about the time of Noah? John, I mean, Luke chapter 17. Let's hear from Jesus. Luke chapter 17. I'm reading verses 26 and 27 down to 29. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark grace. The ark was an ark of grace. I had done For the time is come 
the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begun at us, Christians, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? Hmm? So you pray the boom in Atenia. So you pray the boom at Atenia. You have never said the prayer more. Now one man here has some pain in the air. If the righteous scarcely be saved, scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So one man has some pain in the air. One point here, you have been with heaven now. Because you have never yet sure said. So we should be able to say, yes, sir. There is no way. No way. You will be in heaven. Oh, be able to have heaven now. As I said, we should be able to cast out on you. I want to know what you feel free. And reflect to you, sir. It's a sort of no more sin. No more sin. And no more second Jesus coming to die. Once and for all. And so the Holy Spirit is here to help us, to change us, to transform us. And I was saying, my Holy Spirit, you know, why you be here? You be here fun. You be here bro. You be here bro. I went to Legon in 1985. I went there to preach. So a long time ago. And after preaching, a young lady from one of the halls came to me and said, Pastor! I want, to, I want to talk to you. I said, sure, let's sit down. She, she sat down. She was excited. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am born again. I said, praise God. I'm also born again. I said, I said how do you know you're born again? So, Pastor, I speak in tongues. Last night, we had all night prayer meeting. You don't see my eyes? I speak in tongues. I said, praise God. I also speak in tongues. I also speak in tongues. You want me to speak in tongues to you? Say, yeah, pastor, demonstrate it. I say, so what do you mean? I say, I'm going to 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 say, Then I said, well, what can we talk about? He said, well, pastor, I want you to pray. Because this lady comes here every Sunday to harass me. I said, which lady? I mean, the wife of my boyfriend. I said, sister, wait, 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 wait. You told me that you have been born again. And then you speak in tongues under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And you're talking about your boyfriend with somebody's advance. What draw? So, I said, what's wrong with that? I said, excuse me. I can't pray with you. Withdraw your statements. And after talking to her for five minutes, she knelt down. She wept bitterly. Fooled and deceived by Satan. What makes you think that a fornicator who has not accepted Jesus will go to heaven? What makes you think that Pastor Ew preaching the gospel who is a thief will go to heaven? What makes you think that way? And then I'm not asking for a yell, say, will be a pastor or a baby for another heaven because of Pastor Ew. What makes you think that way? It's impossible. You must be born again and have the character of Jesus. Amen. Uh, don't fool yourself, my brother. So judgment is going on for all believers. Obi Oba, sorry, Obi Oba, yes, it doesn't matter which church you attend. Judgment is going on. One day your name will come up in heaven, and God will scrutinize your life to see whether you are a genuine Christian, reflecting the beautiful character of Christ. Amen. Or. John 3, 36. John 3, 36. Listen to this. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but he will face the anger of God. If you have Jesus, you are free. If you don't have Jesus, you will face the anger of God. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, listen to Jesus so now. I say unto you, He that heareth my words, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. Would you say amen there? Praise the Lord. I quickly want to accept the 
the offer of Jesus. Jeremiah 22, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22. Listen to how Jeremiah paints it. Jeremiah 2, 22. For though you may wash yourself with the nicest soap, Nita, and take the much soap, and spray yourself with the best perfume, your iniquity is still marked before me, written in your books. Hello? Perfume doesn't cover sin. No. No. What makes you think that this guy will go scot free? A guy who killed six million Jews. What makes you think that Hitler will go scot free? What makes you think that somebody who is raping a girl will go scot free? What makes you think that a pastor who is faking and drinking human blood in the night to do miracles will go scot free? What makes you think that who are you know, bro, you know, 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 and you go to heaven? It's not for a pastor, no, 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 Who cares about who when you go to church? You will face the judgment of God. Whether you like it or not. Titan, mum, so we are bishop, so we are cardinal, so we are sophomore, so we are pope, it doesn't matter. You will face the judgment of God. Amen. No two way. You have only one way to escape it. Accept the offer I'm going to present to you tonight. If you reject it, you'll be in trouble. My family here, I'm over here. Look at what he did. He built this over here. And anybody who was weak and sick, they will pass you through the over in our life. Can you imagine this? This guy is going to face the judgment of God. God is going to judge him. The hour of the judgment has come. The day of judgment has come. You and I are going to face God. One by one. Listen to Paul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. We must. When your teacher says you must, you must. No option. God says you will face me. No option. So death doesn't make any difference. Your age doesn't make any difference. As long as your breathing is oxygen, you'll have to face God. Let me go on. Daniel predicted it. In Daniel chapter 8 verse 14, that in 2,300 years, judgment of God will begin. And then he said, I'm cutting 490 years, that is for the Jews. So, from the time the counting began, in 457 BC, listen here, God is so accurate. After 490 years, exactly, in 34 AD, Three and a half years after the death of Jesus, something happened. The Jews arrested Stephen. They stoned him outside the gates of Jerusalem. And while they were stoning him, Stephen said, I can see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand side of God. No, but they were born and so boom. And the guy died. God rejected the nation of Israel. And then he picked one of the persecutors, whose name is called Saul. And he said, you, I want you to be the preacher. Go to Africa. Go to Europe. Tell everybody about a gift God has given to mankind. His name is Jesus Christ. And Paul went to Europe. And from Europe, he came to Africa. And from Africa, the whole thing spread. And that is why today we have Caribbeans, all from Africa. 
And look at how God is using them to expand the kingdom of God all over the world. Praise be to God. So what if we want? When you subtract 490 from 2,300 years, what do you have? You have 1,810. You add it to the date, 34 AD. You have 1844. Since the past 160 years, you and I are living in the time of dead men, which means your name can come up at any time. That's a serious. Intermission who you your name can come up anytime. So God is giving the warning. Here is the warning. It is called the three angels' mercy. Then I saw another angel flying the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those that dwell in the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, the same language in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of a judgment has come. I tell you what I do. Surinami, Surinami, Obian Surinami, Obian Surinami, Sister Surinami, Adia Obian Surinami, Ola Surinami, Minya Sapu Surinami, Asapani Surinami, Mami Surinami, Na Timo, your name can come up tonight. And if you don't have anybody to represent you, you are in deep trouble. Alright, let's go. The trial of the ages. Why is this going to take place? Let me go quickly. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, the Bible says, that each one of us may receive in his body what he has done. According to them, what he has done, according whether it be good or whether it be bad, they are why you nara ever back in Now I hear that thing with the cross. Now we come to the cross of the matter. Where will this judgment take place? Where? In Jerusalem? Is it? Will it be in Canada? In the United States? Will it be in China? Where? Uh, let's find out from God. And Tanya says. I saw it all. Let <laughs> me tell you, I saw it. What did he see? Daniel says, I saw it. And this is what he saw. I watched till the thrones, now we're going to the courtroom in heaven. I watched till the thrones were set in place. And the ancient of days are the judge. Listen to me, my dear friend. Now we're in the courtroom in heaven. The ancient of days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. Mm. His throne was a fiery flame. Now here are the witnesses. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. How many witnesses? One hundred million angels stand and waiting to testify against Andrew's Ewu because they saw me when I was doing it. One hundred million witnesses. And then who is the jury? Very interesting. Let's go to Revelation. The jury. Those who will say, yeah, he deserves death. Who are they? Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And when I'm reading from verse 9, let me read from verse 7. And the first beast, let me read from, from verse 6. And before the throne, and before the throne, and he went in the hole, in heaven, judgment throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round right about the throne were four beasts, full of eyes, before and behind. Interesting. God is seated here and then within the throne room you have another four seats and the four seats have four creatures who are they? Enoch, Elijah, Moses and John the Baptist that Jesus took with him on the Sunday morning when he resurrected. Four. One more year there all. That's not the end of the story. 
The first was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had the face of, of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the twenty-four elders, interesting, the twenty-four elders fell down before him, that sat on the throne and worshipped him, that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Listen here. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things for thy pleasure, and they are and were created. Twenty-four elders, who are these? The twenty-four elders, the Bible tells me, were those who resurrected with Jesus Christ on that Sunday morning. And it took them as the first fruits to prove it to God that I have overcome death. Would you say amen there? My you was for him, my first fruit in here, my dear one, my you have to hold some with one by two. One at the throne room hall. What a privilege. Say, I'm a big offer, I'm a big man, I'm a big man, I'm a big man, I'm a big you have the four elders, no only the part. Elijah, Obama, who are not the same. John the Baptist, and the Green Chief, and the Chief, huh? Enoch, you know what happened to him? One more brother died until he was sixty-five before he started worshiping God. One more thing, I say, the twenty-four elders were human beings. So if you and I accept the offer tonight, when your name is called out in heaven, you don't have to be there. Because there are people who are representing you. Would you say him and there? Yeah. They will say, oh, I understand. We will say you have a I understand. We understand. So just leave him alone. And then the offer comes. Oh, I'm excited. I'm already excited. Listen to this. Now he says, the court, the exact words, the court was seated. And the books were open. Uh oh, books. What books? Not the book, but books. What books? I'm going to share with you those books. So you know how to behave yourself. So who do you have share with you? One no more. No matter what you hear, they are recorded in heaven. And one day when your name comes up, you will be in trouble if you don't have anybody to represent you. Why is God interested in judging us? Reason number one this guy. Satan. There are some of us who love him so much. They don't want you to have no one part of the end of that. We love Satan so much. We give him a clean bath and powder him and he sleeps by us. In the kitchen, we cook what he wants. In our refrigerator, it's full of bottles of beer. He loves it. The movies we watch, the music we listen to. Young people, a Jumla Uchi in our Satan says, Thank you so much for choosing me. I appreciate it. God says, if you have chosen this guy, you are condemned already. Your name will not even come up in heaven because you are already condemned. Anyone who goes with Satan is condemned because you rebel against God and say, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Said God, I don't like you. I hate you. I'm going to rebel against you. And so anybody Satan Satan has rejected Jesus, has rejected God, has insulted God. You have to be judged with no mercy. Have you accepted the guy by the way you talk, by the things you do? Is he in your home? You can tell so feel what. Well, I will share books with you. Now I will share cinema with you. Now I will share movies with you. Now I will share movies with you. Now I will share free to move. Now I will share movies with you. Like sharing the part more. You can testify whether this guy is in your home or not. And this is the second reason. The second reason. God's Ten Commandments. Hmm. Have you heard people saying that 
Jesus annulled the Ten Commandments on the cross and we don't need to obey it. You know who's speaking through them? Say that. God says, listen, I, Jehovah, El Shaddai, El Elyon, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Olam, I, with my finger, I wrote the Ten Commandments on two tables of stone. And you are telling me you don't need it? All right. Now you know the two reasons. The third reason, sin is not going to rise up the second time. You are not going to find you. And my name is so good, you have to because of sin. Oh my God, I'm not going to Not even one sinner will enter heaven. Not even one will be a record in heaven. No, and yet the boy in here, or the attorney, no, they are sacred. No, no, I say yes. Now, all the course, so as a child of God, amen. amen. The power of joy is yours. The heavenly records reveal God's justice. So then, so then, each one of us shall give account of himself to God. This is Paul. Romans 14 12. So then, what can be the answer? What can be the answer? You have said something before coming to this conclusion. So then, each one of us shall give account of himself. Not the father, not the mother, not the pastor, not anybody. Yourself. To God. You will give account of yourself to God. For God will bring every work into judgment. Including every second thing, whether it be good or evil. It's Genesis 12, 14. You may say, well, I'm a young person. Maybe I'm a father. I'm underage. Well, listen here. Oh, young man, rejoice in your youth. Rejoice in your youth. And let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. In other words, if your heart says, smoke, smoke. If your heart says, drink beer, drink beer. You want marijuana? Go on. If your heart says, eat snakes, go ahead. You want lizards? Try them. Roast them. Anything you want to do, your heart tells you to do, your are come and pay the idea. If your heart tells you that if you look for a uh, uh, short, short woman, go for them. Walk in the ways of your heart. O come and say, open. 20, 40, 20, man. Follow them. Stop it. Take, 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 take one side. Follow them. Stop it. Put your collar back to that. Follow them. Anything you want to do, do it. Walk in the ways of your heart. We ain't going to come down. We ain't going to pay. We ain't going to get the Go ahead. And in the sight of your eyes. We are so here is your boy in the community. Whatever you think you like, go ahead. God said, do anything you want to do. But I will tell you, it's as simple as that. So, young person, you can insult your mother, you can walk over your mother, you can sleep in the house, you can sleep overboard, you can sleep with boys. You can sleep with girls, you can be a lesbian, you can do anything you want to do. God is saying, just enjoy yourself. And the day is coming that you will stand before me and give account. And from there, hellfire. So that the choice is yours. The choice is yours. The day is coming. And God will call your name. And you alone, you will stand before God. And if you don't have anybody in heaven to represent you, you are in trouble. They just brush you aside. And they delete your name from the book of life. And write your name in the book of death. I'm going to deal with the books in a moment. You are finished. Mr. Sir, young people, Okuma Ketuan Fama Urahe. Give your other heart to Jesus. Accept the offer he's offering to you tonight. And things will never be the same. But I say unto you, Jesus said, I say unto you, I say unto you, that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified. And by your words you will be condemned. Who said it? Jesus himself.
Matthew 12, 36 and 37. When you want some picture of Nkokonsa, you will give a count of it. Now say yes to Umoa. When you want to say no kure, or do, I will tell Papa ye manifest free, oh what you want to Now say yes to Umoa, and you will pray for what you want to say. What's the meaning of you want to say? Is that what you want? No way. No way. I want to be with Jesus. I want to be with Jesus. Do you come from But your ends will be with the devil. Go on gossip. Go on destroy people with your character, with your tongue. Go on and castigate people. Go on and assassinate the character of other people. But one day you will give account of it. Jesus said, I have an offer for you. The court was seated and the books were open. What books? Here are the books. Just take your time and write the verses. Now, go here for kind. Book number one, your personal book. The day you were born, where you were born, everything about you is recorded. Everything about you is recorded. Book number two. The book of remembrance, Malachi, chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. Let me read, read the Psalms books. Psalm 56, verse 8. Psalm 139, verse 16. Psalm 87, verse 6. I'm going over for the sake of those who are listening by internet. Psalm 56, verse 8. Psalm 139, verse 16. Psalm 87, verse 6. They talk about your personal book. Your personal family. In heaven, in death, they walk here, they walk here, but they are war. Everything is recorded. I'm a little bit of a fool. Who can see you? But we're born here, we're born. I get my father here. Everything is recorded in your personal book. Don't forget that. Book number two is called the Book of Remembrance. Malachi chapter three, verses fourteen to sixteen. It says, "Those who think about God." Those who meditate on God, those who study the word of God, those who keep go to church, those who retain their tithes faithfully to expand the kingdom of God, their names are recorded in the book of remembrance. He's not saving you by your words, but he's recording it, the deeds of your salvation. Let me put it this way. Before I was a Christian, I had works. They were works of evil. Now, when I became a Christian, I had works. Works of righteousness. Would you say amen there? Amen. So God has recorded all this. And then you have the book of life. Look at the 10 verse 20. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. And then you have the book of death. So you you are finished. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 to 15. And then you have the Ten Commandments. Hmm. Let me read that to you a little bit. Ten Commandments, James chapter 2. I'll come to the other books. But let me read about the Ten Commandments. James 2, 19 to 23. Thou believest that there is one God, you do well. Satan also believes. Hello? Are you there? So we didn't say, I know what That was not for our one who was on CGD. So what is the difference between the faith I have and the faith of Satan? But some Jesus in the law. What's the difference between us? But will thou, O oh, vain man, know that faith without works is dead? I be a man from Sumeria, me know when some tell me say, but some you will do it, me know you will do it. But some you are telephone, me know you are telephone. But some you give my money, me know you give my money. In China, or two million, you be there and do. Or say I will be. But some you are born, me know you are born. Would you say amen, brother? Faith has works in you. 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou hast faith wrought with works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed in God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. Now, why is James saying all this? Let's go to verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all, he will face the judgment of God. What law? For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if you commit no adultery, but if you kill, you become a transgressor of the law. So speak it, and so do, and they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Can I ask you a question? James 4 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So you said, obedient, I want to jump around. James is out. And you are still doing it? So you say, oh, why? Now what you do now? James says, you know it's wrong, and you are still doing it. It means you want God to judge you. You know it is wrong to do what you do. You know it is wrong to disobey your parents. You know it is wrong to kill the baby in your tummy. You know it is wrong. You know it is wrong. James says, you know it is wrong, yet you are doing it. Now Paul says, if you have forgotten, let me remind you. Hebrews 10, 26. For if we sin willfully, if we sin willfully, what by Ebonichia, meaning so be it in my name, what am I? If we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Serious. We are New Testament, not Old Testament. So who will you have now when now Guapa, Eddie, I mean, I have for the Tiano of them. But a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fearing indignation who shall destroy all my enemies, saith the Lord. Sister, why don't you ask God to help you to overcome that habit? Why don't you just take your courage and say, Sister, goodbye, we have to stop. I want to please God. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Record my lament, lest my tears on your scroll are they not in your record? Psalm 56, verse 8. David said, Then those who fear the Lord speak one to another, and the Lord listened and heard them. And then what did he do? So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord, and who meditates on his name? One of the quotes that go on by a boy and a man, and Mr. Macho with the Kai, Mede Kai, I do why the Macho Nina, Nyan Tina Mede Joe, no what Jimmy, what Jimmy, no way, and Papa Medawasi, and Mr. Medawasi, and Mr. Medawasi, so to your ties, somebody, my Jimmy, I can say, Medawasi, so what sister, somebody, you love me, Medawasi. So go on Sabaya, over you can come and tell us for being such a nice father. You are helping your children to know me. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Andrews, for telling your brothers and sisters that Jesus is coming again. Thank you. And when you heard Andrew's voice, you accepted the offer. Thank you, my daughter. Tonight, Jesus wants to write your name in this book, the book of remembrance. And on Friday, the 17th of August, you heard his voice. And you accepted the offer. You will write it in this book. Don't let him down. My yes, we show with you and sign And then we have the book of life. Revelation 21, verse 27. Listen to this. For whosoever, for who 
whosoever, <laughs> I like that, for whosoever shall overcome, will be clothed in white garments, and I will not block his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He was in the city, but he never did what they were doing. He came out clean because he accepted my offer. There will be two classes. Only two classes. You have to choose which of them you belong to. Revelation 22 verse 11. Those who are holy and those who are not holy. Those who are righteous and those who are not righteous. Those who are just and those who are not just. In TV Sarko, we are crown. Measure what it means to be crown. Are you just? Are you righteous? Are you covered with the robe of righteousness? Are you making Jesus live in you? Are you hiding in Jesus behind the little, as the little girl said? Are you hiding behind Jesus? Can God see Christ in you? The slower, 